Hi guys, my name is Emily and I'm an incoming second year at UChicago. Today I'm going to be reading my Common App essay and also sharing some general tips for success on the Common App essay. Um, I recognize that this video is like a year overdue from when I started posting all my essays. So if you watched those videos and applied during the class of 25 admission season, then I hope everything worked out the way you wanted it to and know that no matter what, you have so much to be proud of and are going to have an amazing and successful year no matter where you are next year. And if you're in the class of 26 or after or a transfer student, then I hope that this video and my other videos are helpful. And as always, feel free to leave questions in the comment section and request for future videos. Thank you for watching and without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I chose the second option of the Common App essays, which was the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time when you faced a challenge, setback, or failure. How did it affect you and what did you learn from the experience? And here's my essay. To motivate the speech team, our coach says, your state tournament may not happen in Peoria. How is that possible? Isn't state always in Peoria? From the moment I was assigned the event radio speaking as a freshman to the final round at sectionals three years later, I had learned to explore my voice, fitting its every element to a multitude of roles, from presidential election reporter to sports broadcaster. Entering the sectional final, I cleansed my mind of any frustration because I knew the past two years of missing state had only strengthened my resolve. At the beep of my stopwatch, adrenaline pumped through my veins, and my words created a unique array of storytelling. The week's news came alive as the timer clicked down to the perfect five minutes. I channeled the euphoria I felt since my very first tournament and applied every element of tone, diction, and vitality I had polished. Then the news came. I had missed state by one place. As I reflected on the previous year's near misses, my mind slipped out of reality, and a familiar yet foreign sensation of numbness loomed over me. Critiques snaked through my mind. Surely I'd had one too many stumbles or breathed too heavily. The reality was worse. The microphone hadn't fully picked up my voice. A technical issue had left my vibrant performance confined to the broadcast room, not protected to the people who mattered. My mind was trapped in a carnival house of mirrors, and everywhere I searched for meaning, my distorted reflection stared back. As I struggled to peel my baggy eyes from the critique sheets, my dad shared a lesson from his meditation journey, a journey I had previously disregarded because I wasn't some 50-year-old experiencing a midlife crisis. He said, Emily, when you're disappointed in an outcome from something you're passionate about, don't detach from the activity, only from the result that is out of your control. Suddenly, my coach's insight and dad's advice began to make sense. Isn't it stupid to let one missed opportunity strip away the reward of performing? After all, I had succeeded in final rounds throughout my junior speech season and felt my energy radiate through my words and spirit. I stood at a crossroads. Should I wallow in a singular defeat or appreciate the many successes achieved through my involvement in speech? I had previously visualized success as linear, but in this moment of reflection, that line transformed into a scatter plot of experiences. Memories flashed before my eyes. Standing in front of a judge and six competitors hundreds of times had enabled me to calm my heart rate when playing a cello solo for an entire arena. Preparing my radio scripts under time limitations had translated to words flowing effortlessly during a grueling economic question session at the New York Fed Nationals. Performing my speeches passionately had inspired me to represent our community law firm in a presentation to donors. Treasuring the love of my teammates, who nicknamed me Radio Rebel, has filled me with empathy and compassion to patiently teach my young cello students. These moments in time, made possible by my participation in speech, have formed my core essence. I had been programmed to believe that hard work mattered only when it led directly to success, so I needed to search outside the typical sequence for closure. My journey can be a story without having a beginning, middle, and desirable ending. Meaning is in every moment, and cherishing the glow from within is its own reward in an ever-evolving story. As I enter my senior year, I've come to accept my state tournament may not happen in Peoria. Competing at state isn't necessary to appreciate the multitude of experiences speech has prepared me for in life. That said, I do hope the saying is actually fourth time's the charm. So that was my essay. So moving into the tip section of this video, so first I'd just like to touch on the general purpose for this essay 
So the Common App essay is an opportunity for you to display um, personality traits, character development, and otherwise anything that wouldn't be apparent to an admissions officer just from re reading your application with your activity list and everything else. So with that comes very much focusing on the type of person you want to display yourself as to colleges obviously should be in line with your values as a person. And then using experiences you've had, which could relate to an activity you've done, like what my essay was, to then, to then show examples of your personality and character development through that activity. So with that said, the first tip I have is when you're brainstorming what to write about for this essay, prioritize experiences that you think will showcase the best parts of your character rather than experiences that you think will fit into one of the predetermined common app prompts the best. So I did have an idea that prompt number two was probably going to be the one I would write about just because I felt it was the most impactful story I could tell. But my very, very first draft of this essay was not at all like the one I had written here. It was pretty much like a rant style of just words about speech and everything I'd felt, all the experiences that happened. It was very unorganized, kind of chronological, just from start to finish, and it didn't really have a clear purpose. But doing that enabled me to pick out the parts of that were that were the most relevant to showcasing my character. And then from there, I saw that they very easily fit into prompt number two. And then I just expanded on this um, aspect of how I grew as a person and what I learned from it. And um, from there was able to fit the story and narrative that I originally told to the purpose of prompt number two. So generally, it's a good idea if you're having a hard time um, finding one of these prompts to do, just write an experience that's meaningful to you and then see how it fits into the prompts and expand on it from there rather than limiting yourself to the prompts from the start. So kind of along similar lines, um, the second tip I have is that the takeaways of the essay are always more important than the plot. So while it's important to have a detailed plot, at the end of the day, that's not what the admissions officers are going to remember. They're not going to remember what happened to you. They're going to remember what you learned from it and what you're trying to say about yourself through this experience. And this applies to any of the prompts, but I also think especially to this prompt since it's very much a reflective how you grew as a person type prompt. Um, so the way that I would recommend checking for this in your essay is that the climax of the plot should happen at the absolute latest halfway through the essay. So I could have written this essay um, with a bunch of details about my performance and leading up to the state performance. And then when I didn't get to state, if that was towards the end of the essay, I wouldn't have any space left to talk about my development and what I learned from this experience. So even though all those details are really important, I had to do a lot of work cutting that so that the the climax of the essay happened really early and then the rest of it was the really important things that they were going to take away from the essay. So the next piece of advice I have is a pretty common one, which is show, don't tell. So what this means is that you should generally avoid any blanket statement like this is important to me or I learned this or I'm this type of person and instead always show those qualities through how you respond to certain experiences. So instead of being told about the person you are, which maybe they could see in a resume or your activities list, you're actually showing experiences that relate to the person you are so that the admissions officer can make those conclusions for themselves and actually get to know you through this essay. The next tip I have is to always write this essay in first person. I think sometimes students are inclined to write the Common App essay in second person, um, with statements like, you know the feeling of this. And I think this is out of an attempt to connect with the admissions officers, but this actually has a really counterproductive effect because what it does is it just makes the essay less focused on your experience and who you are and attempts to make it more of a universal experience. But that's not the point of the essay. The point of the essay is for the admissions officer to be able to live through your experience. And from that, connect with you and make conclusions about you. So you don't need to directly reference them as you or directly speak to the admissions officer in order for this to happen. Similarly, try to stay away from using general third person words like people or impersonal pronouns like one. 
Um, for example, instead of saying speech makes people feel this way, say speech makes me feel this way. And this is just the same concept that you're not trying to create a universal experience, but rather trying to show your experience and your admissions officer will get to know you through that. The next tip I have is to make sure the chronology of your essay is very clear. And this is because if an admissions officer can't tell the order that events are happening or are confused about what place in time they are, then they're going to get distracted and may not um, get to the takeaways of your essay. So the two ways that I think are the most effective to ensure that the chronology of your essay is clear is to first make sure that your transitions are always clearly defined where you are in time, that you're part of your transition, so usually they'd use the word I, um, and also that they're active, that they're happening presently, and they're not kind of jumping around in time. And then the other thing is to be very careful about tense. So obviously I'm writing about a past experience, so my whole essay is going to be in past tense. But in this essay, I kind of do jump around a little bit with flashbacks, so it's important that the things that happened before the events that I'm describing are written in past perfect tense. So saying like, I had done this rather than I did this, just so that the admissions officer is very clear that they're coming along with this um, sequence of events that happened in the past, but in the moments of reflection that those happened before that. And this is just to make sure that there's no confusion. And another good way to check this is to have a parent maybe, or a teacher read over your essay and make sure that it's, it's clear to them what you're talking about and where you are, because odds are if it's not clear to them and maybe they know about this experience, then it's definitely not going to be clear to an admissions officer. So this is something that I really struggled with at first when I was writing because I was jumping all over the place and definitely helped my essay a lot to make sure the point in time was always very clear. The final tip I have is to try to write in active voice more than passive voice whenever possible. Um, so just a reminder, active voice is when the subject does an action and passive voice is when an action is done to a subject. So a passive voice sentence would be, this essay was written by me, whereas an active voice sentence would be, I wrote this essay. And it's kind of clear that the second one is just more engaging because it's, it's active. It's taking the listener through what is actually happening. Um, and I know my, my AP Lit teacher senior year was super insistent on this. She like wouldn't let us turn in an essay unless if it was under 20% passive voice. So I didn't really think about this too much until I actually started writing these essays. Um, but there exist online checkers, um, one's called Astakara that she recommended to us. So if you guys want to put your essays in an online passive voice checker and just see any sentence that is outlined in passive voice that you think you'd be able to make into active voice um, could make your essay more engaging. This isn't to say that every single sentence has to be an active voice because sometimes the emphasis is more effective in passive voice, but it's just something to keep in mind to make the essay more active and engaging. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, feel free to leave questions or video requests in the comment section. Um, also, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel for more. And I know right now is kind of getting into the peak application season for the class of 26 and school starting soon. So just know that I'm here as a resource to answer your questions. And I wish you all luck if you're applying to college this year. Thanks, guys. See you later.